Hello everyone and welcome back to my Interstellar Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2. In this live stream I start off by designing a space station for low Earth orbit that would be able to refuel our craft in low Earth orbit with primarily hydrazine. As usual the building process is sped up by a factor of four to give you a better idea of how things went. The idea was that the entire core of the rocket we're going to launch is going to be the station and the station would include the reactor and generator you see at the center there but the fuel and the thermal launch nozzles will be off board on the boosters they're not well i guess you could think of them as boosters but they require the reactor in order to run right uh, of course our radiators have to be on the station core itself to make sure that cooling occurs but once we get into orbit we can decouple the boosters and they can be deorbited uh, using separatrons and the rest of the station will be ready for duty now based on prior experience, even though I didn't think I really needed to, I decided to add enough radiator panels to get the thermal helper into green, as you see there. And so those fin-like things aren't for stability, they're for radiation capacity, radiator capacity. Anyway, let's take a look at how the launch went, and this is going to be interesting. Uh, hold on, let me see what happens. Now it's got me interested, you see. Let me ignite the engines. It's not really going up. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this particular design is really tempting to crack in here. Ooh, look at that. It's gone blue. I think I'm gonna call this my blue phase. Well, Danny plays with stock physics. Um, what I've done is... Um, well, some of these bits are on escape trajectories now. I don't know about the, the altitude being below sea level by 107 meters. Launch clamps survived. I think the main problem was that the umbrella radiator that we have there uh, needed to be resized to avoid clipping into the body and also I decided to increase the size of our reactor and generator and that led us to only need four launch nozzles instead of eight so we got a lot more productivity out of that and here I hadn't actually put the separatrons to return these in order to control her here I'm adding the separatrons, the controller and a reaction wheel, the reaction wheel to make sure it can turn to retrograde on each of the boosters so that we could recover them. So now we're all set again and we'll see how it goes. We still have to deal with heat issues. But anyway, ignition and launch. Well, it's going up, but it's like a quarter of what MechJeb said it would be. I have no idea about the Delta V though, that's a separate issue. Oh wait, hold on. I want to get it in line with the moon and everything. This is not good, hold on. Let, let's let's revert and get it in line with, the, well, if we time warp and try and get it in line with the moon, is it gonna wig out? That's the question. We might have to time warp before bringing it out to the launch pad. Thrust-away ratio is good. Go up, go up, 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 up. Jeez. There we go. <sighs> this rocket, though. We're going to be staying at 1.2 Gs for a very long time, it occurs to me. Good thing we have a ton of Delta V. Actually, I don't want to use any of the hydrazine in the station itself, so let's just pay attention to how much is in that tank. I, I want to drain this tank. Oh, that's not what I did. No, that's what I wanted. Uh-oh. Uh, yeah, I made a fuel imbalance, didn't I? Anyway, I just wanted to keep that up. I clicked the wrong thing. 
But we're gonna have a lot of gravity losses, is the point. And you never thought you'd see these kinds of Kerbal, old style Kerbal trajectories ever again. Nope, nope, there are rockets that are gonna need this. And they are the ones that don't burn much fuel on the way up. We should be alright just on the fuel from here. So we'll keep the fuel in the. that we have stored in the station. So far, no heat problems, I have to say. So that's good. We seem to be alright on the heat tolerance thing. That's a rarity. Oh, I'm, I'm actually going in the wrong direction. Oops. I should have actually pulled it up rather than down. We're launching a station. Basically all this is a station except for the booster pods here. The wonders of KSB Interstellar, of course. Well, it shouldn't be too hard to deorbit these little pods. We are not deorbiting the reactor. The reactor is on the vessel. We're just deorbiting the nozzle, uh, nearly spent fuel tanks, and the controller, and some radiator panels. 12,000 delta V to orbit, but I don't know if we can trust the delta V reading on this one. I mean, its thrust weight ratio reading was off by a factor of four, but it might have been because of the low thrust all the way. Recently subscribed to my channel, YouTube? Yeah. Loving all the videos, especially Realism Overall. Well, this is Realism Overall combined with Interstellar, KSP Interstellar, so we've got antimatter here. It's much more fun. Well, sort of. Well, we did some nifty stuff on stream in Realism Overhaul yesterday. We landed uh, a pod on Mars with Kerbals in. That was pretty good. I don't know if I can deorbit these with their little packs right now. We actually put the station into a proper station orbit, but that might cause problems for deorbiting these guys. Let's see. Okay, off they go. Let's turn to one of them. Okay, retrograde please. Before you run out of electric charge. I hope it's not, uh, its uh, center of mass is not too far off of these guys. It doesn't have gimbling. How often do I stream? Mostly Saturdays and Sundays I stream the beast. Though, uh, sometimes on the weekdays I do non kerbal things, like uh, Mass Effect. Alright, well, let's see. Well, it says... See, right now it claims it's got a delta V of 23,000, guys. And that's because of the thermal nozzle, but it's not got the reactor connected to it. So, hold on, let's, let's check that. Yeah, it's not actually got any delta V, it's just totally lying to us, see? But anyway, let's ignite the separatrons to deorbit and see. Ah, uh. oh, it's just short. Ah, oh. couldn't quite deorbit it. Ah, uh, space debris confirmed. I think it's actually the extra hydrazine we're carrying. Let's see. Um, yeah, without the hydrazine, we're only seven tons. We've, we're carrying like four. That's like fourteen tons of hydrazine right there. We could definitely deorbit if we got rid of the hydrazine. Wait, do we have a? Uh, I need ship manifest. I don't suppose ship manifest is in here, is it? If I had ship manifest, I could dump the hydrazine and then we could deorbit properly. And go, uh, putting the thrust on doesn't seem to dump the fuel. I wish that would work too. It shows some fake delta V, but it doesn't actually show the stuff going out. No, it's not going to work. On the right side, it puts these in an orbit that won't get in the way of the station. So that's a positive. 
Okay, back to our station. Let's deploy all the things. I believe... Uh, let me deploy... Oh, well, okay. Cannot deploy while stowed. Oh, they're all coming out at the same time. Uh-oh. Don't bump into each other. So, our low Earth orbit space station module 1, we can expand on this, is prepared. It's got no thrusters, it's got a reaction wheel, but not a very powerful one. Everything looks nominal. I think we can leave it be. Oh, uh, let's see if our Y-Wing can rendezvous with it. And if I don't mess that up. It doesn't seem like... What kind of orbit did we launch it in? That seems like a really weird orbit. Why did we have to launch it in that orbit? Yeah, it's not going to be able to rendezvous very easily with this. We'll need to refuel it some other way so it can get to this... I mean, it's got plenty of Delta V. Let's turn to it. But it can't get into this orbit right now. Not with what Delta V it has left. Setting aside the issue of the Y-Wing for the time being, I decided to turn to the, building the Rosinante from the sci-fi series The Expanse. And this is a Mars Corvette. It was actually launched from a larger carrier vessel earlier on in the first season. And our, our main characters basically use this to get around places. Its main characteristic is extremely high thrust using that very obvious nozzle at the back. It uses fusion power to power itself. And so I tried to figure out how to build that. I didn't really have black and red parts, though. The parts that matched the look of the Rosinante best are, of course, Lackluster Labs parts still. And so you see me stacking them there. Trying to figure out how to use this particular nozzle, a magneto-inertial fusion engine. It actually has a little reactor of its own, though uh, I would eventually find that it needs some supplemental help. But um, the problem is, even though it looks the part, it really looks like the right nozzle for this design, it doesn't provide enough thrust. In fact, there's very little things that could match the thrust and duration of the vessels in the expanse. And in fact, I don't think there's anything included that really does. Uh, I'll have to go through all the engines, the interstellar pack, to see if we get that particular combination. Now, of course, the Rosinante is a military vessel, and so I decided to add BD Armory so I could get some guns just to make sure it looked proper, uh, not because I intend to use them. Uh, and also I used uh, procedural wings in order to make the red paneling on the side. I got to sort of a orange, the Mars color is sort of a Mars-ish Mars orange, not really red. It's actually the color of Mars in addition to the other black on the vehicle. Of course I used the radiators to create the black color. And then it was time to launch it. So I decided that what I would use was the ITS ship, not the whole SpaceX ITS with the 42 engines at the bottom, just the ship portion with the six Raptor vacuums and the three Raptor sea level engines. I thought would be enough to launch this into space, assuming that the fusion engine would finish off orbit at like about 3000 meters per second. So here's how that went. Weird song for it, but let's go. Ignition. And launch. Good old fashioned chemical engines. Yes, Elon did say that he wants to use ITS ship basically in this way. The. I really wish that they had a cargo variant of it that could just open up the big fairings, let the cargo go, and then close up the big fairings, you know? I've, I've been wanting that and wanting that. Right now, the vacuum engines aren't exactly great. Their specific impulse is actually fairly low. But we need them, we need their thrust. We're past the speed of sound, approaching max Q. Uh oh, uh oh. Uh... Come on, please, no! So, here's the thing, and we, we'll have to make a note to Elon. Elon, if you want to use this as a suborbital transport, maybe make the vacuum engines gimbal. Right? But of course, it's probably the big fairing that caused me my demise.
They look really dinky like this. But we just need to get to orbit, so let's just ignore that for now. The inelegancy. Ignition. And launch. Well, I think we're through max Q at least. Uh, do I need to be completely out of the atmosphere for the Rosinante engines to work? I don't, I'm not sure, but we're going to be out of the atmosphere anyway. Okay, now we, get, we have to let loose the largest fairings I've used in a while. Okay, get the fairings in their own little stage. Throttle down. And separate the fairings. Oh boy. So now we're going in the same inclination as the station, but we have no way to dock with the station because these docks are not the same as the station's docks. I like these docks though. Okay, separation, and fusion engine. Uh-oh. Um, Kerbal, we have a problem. Uh, it gets... okay. Yeah. I've missed something. I've definitely missed something. Thrust zero. It's supposed to be a magneto inertial fusion engine. But we've got 377 nanometers per second squared of acceleration. That's not what Mechjeb had said. But Mechjeb apparently does not like me. One of those proper electric charge produ uh, production, that's what we needed. We needed a generator. I thought it, it seemed to have a reactor on it already, but we need a separate reactor. Let me see, can I stage the RCS ports? Yeah, okay, good. Um, Alright, at least the RCS ports work. So, as mentioned earlier, I needed to add back in a reactor and a generator uh, in order to get the necessary amount of thrust. Well, necessary, but still not exactly what the Rossinante is supposed to have. I also added some extra HE3 and deuterium fuel, and then we were set to go again. So here's how that launch went. Okay, ignition, and launch. I gotta remember to let them rev up a bit. Payload's heavier now, though. Okay, let's get the fairings in a separate thing. That's the fairings. Let's not accidentally eject the HE3 canisters. Okay. Interested to see if I can recreate the SDF-1 from across. Okay, I'm not doing- look, look, I'll recreate things as I see fit, alright? Let's not go overboard on the recreation thing. I really do have a lot of ideas of my own for spacecraft, honest. I should have tucked the nozzle in more. It doesn't look quite right. Except... Well, it's 0.36 G's. It's not quite what I want, but I'll take it. Boy, this is like the opposite of what's true of the Rocinante. Rocinante's got like 6 G's. Yeah, I've, I've got lithium fuel. I've got uh, 50,000 lithium. I've got 10,000 meters per second according to this. But yeah... This is like an RL-10 kind of thrust, 
not the Rocinante's high G-forces. But I wanted something with the right kind of nozzle. But it should be tucked in a bit more. What do we what do we think? Uh, good Rocinante? The effects? They're okay, I mean, they're unique. Uniqueness is good in general. Does look like a futuristic RL-10? Sort of, yeah. I mean, I don't know what a fusion engine should look like, so... Anything different is okay. The only problem would be if it had, uh... You know, if it looked exactly like a non-fusion engine, I would be a little bit irritated. It's, uh... It looks like our heat situation is fine. I didn't have to worry about that, apparently. We are in orbit. Uh, we'll leave this here with Lyasa Kerman here for now. Lyasa's got two years of food, so no problems there. It's meant for more crew than this. And so there you have it. That's what occurred during the March 5th Interstellar Overhaul livestream. And I can tell you that in the March 12th livestream, the next episode, uh, we try to make it to another star, Proxima Centauri, and that will be with a warp drive ship because I'm impatient and uh, it, doing the cryogenic thing is going to be a little bit more finicky. That's not what I was trying to test for now. So, But cryogenic freeze, cryo freeze will be something that comes up. But for now, warp drive ship in the next episode. Look forward to that. And I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.